Well, as promised, yet another triumph in space. NASA has achieved the first controlled flight by an aircraft on another planet. Ingenuity, a small helicopter, has flown on Mars. To tell us more about why we should be excited about this, we chat now to astronomer David Block. David, a very good morning to you. Yes, we all know we were excited when this happened. We, we felt that there are, the possibilities are endless. What exactly should we be excited about uh, when it comes to Ingenuity and this, and this uh, helicopter takeoff and landing? Well, good morning, Yuvek. It's awesome to be in touch again. Uh, this takes one back to the flight of the Wright brothers in the following sense, that the first flight in 1903 by the Wright brothers, that flight lasted about 12 seconds. And, of course, now we've got jumbo jets and infinitely more besides on Earth. Now, this chopper, for it to take off, was a remarkable technological feat and let me explain why. The gravitational force field on Mars is only a third that of the Earth. But what makes this flight so unique is that the pressure, the density of the Martian atmosphere is only 1%, only 1% uh, of that on Earth. So let me give you a calculated analogy. Mm. What happened with the Mars helicopter is analogous to us flying a helicopter on Earth at an altitude of 30,000 meters above the Earth's surface, which has not been done before. So that's what makes us so unique, is that the air is so thin on Mars that you've got to get the rotor blade spinning uh, Uveca at mm -hmm. 2,500 revs every minute just to get enough bite, as it were, mm -hmm. for the rotor blades to start lifting up. And then furthermore, what made it so extraordinary is it didn't go up for 12 seconds like the Wright brothers one did, but it actually stayed up for a total of around uh, 39 mm -hmm. seconds before coming down again. Why is all that so important? Well, just like the Wright brothers initiated a new epoch uh, of flying on planet Earth, this, even though it's a mere 39 seconds, this demarcates a new epoch mm. of travel on another planet. So let, let's talk about what that could mean now, especially for, for future missions uh, as well. After we've done this on Mars, what's the next move? What's the next step? What do we use this for? Well, ob obvious, I mean, that's a lovely question, Rebecca. And the next step is obviously to use the same drone or helicopter on Mars, but take it up higher, allow it to fly for more extended periods of time. But if we want to fast track, say, in a decade or two, what it really means is that if you put up a station on Mars, as Elon Musk and others want to do, mm. you can actually then take off by chopper. <laughs> oh. And just like we can fly, say, from mm. here to Tuane, yeah. you can actually fly then on Mars. This is in time to come, yeah. you know, halfway around Mars and just zip across. So. It makes space colonization so much more accessible and such fun. You know, it sounds a very little achievement, 39 seconds, but uh, reminding our listeners yet again of the Wright brothers at 12 seconds, and now just look at what we've got on Earth, mm. um, it, it's, it's heralding in um, a new epoch. And what I loved about it is you saw these rotor blades spinning so fast, and yet it could take off, yeah. and yet it was mm. successful. Awesome. Well, David, if I can ask you very quickly, I mean, the bigger picture where we're looking at, you know, life after Earth, living on other planets as well, and you spoke about, yes, if we were someday to live on Mars, that we could maybe just fly halfway across um, on this helicopter. But this step here, how much closer does it take us uh, to, to uh, sort of uh, realizing that dream or our plan B when things on Earth go kaboom one day, I suppose? I think that uh, what it really goes to show is that we really... Uh, at the cutting edge of technology, our knowledge of applied mathematics, of which I'm a professor, our knowledge of applied maths, our knowledge of engineering, our knowledge of aeronautical engineering, is so advanced that um, we can actually, forgive me, is so advanced that we can actually um, design, here's the point, we can actually design 
craft mm. to operate on other worlds. The biggest uh, hindrance right now, Yuvika, is one of time. Mm. Mars being so far away, it'll take months, it does take months to take passengers there. It would take months to bring them mm. back, if not longer. So that, there's still many hurdles to overcome. But I think that this is a step in the right direction. I like to conclude this little interview with the following quote. Do you remember 1969, Yuveka, when man landed on the moon? Neil Armstrong said, that's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. And we know what that meant um, many mm -hmm. decades down the line. I see the flight of this little incredible chopper on Mars in the same light, one small step, one small step for man, mm -hmm. but a giant leap for mankind looking ahead to travel and maybe live mm -hmm. on the planet, the red planet Mars. Well, I'm not sure it's going to happen in my lifetime, David Block, but no. uh, hopefully my, my kids get to take that flight. Thanks very much for that. That's why you should be excited. Leaps and bounds. Coming up here.